on the bench today is a pretty rare instrument. I've been looking one of the, one of, for one of these things for decades. I mean, I've seen them a lot, and they command premium prices like $500. And um, if you need one, you need one. Now, uh, I'll get to what it is. Most people in industry probably would have bought a Kepco a brand version of this thing if they needed one. But Hewlett Packard made one, and I've always wanted the Hewlett Packard one because I had one of these on my bench in the way back days and used it for a particular project. Um, so what is this thing? It looks very familiar. There are a ton of dual power supplies that were in this form factor. It had uh, two meters in it, and it was a plus and minus 20 volt or plus and minus 25 volt dual power supply. And so one power supply, two power supplies, and, and that's what, what you, would, you would get. And uh, I used to have one of those. They're wonderful supplies. If, if you need a supply, they're really great. Um, now these are full analog uh, non-switching power supplies. So they're very, very heavy. I think this one weighs 18 pounds, something like that. Um, and so most people have gone to switchers these days, but those old dual power supplies are just a joy. They're really, really nice. I had one on my bench for a very, very long time. Um, so what is this thing? Well, it is a power supply of sorts. So let's first talk about it. It does two different things. So let's first talk about it being a power supply, okay? So let me turn the power on here. And we have a voltage knob here. And if I turn the knob, you can see the voltage go up. So uh, it is um, a, this one goes up to 50 volts. So 20 volts, 30, 40, 50 volts. So it is a 50 volt power supply and it goes zero to one amp. So that's pretty healthy. Um, the thing that sets this apart from a lot of power supplies is if you turn it the other direction, look at this minus 20 volts, minus 30 volts, minus 40 volts, minus 50 volts. So this power supply goes minus 50 to plus 50 with just one turn of the knob, okay? So that's very, very unusual to have a, a plus and minus, uh, plus and minus voltage. And um, if you look at the amperage here, okay, let's put a load on it. So I have a, uh, a load here, we'll put a, what do I have? A 50 ohm resistor. I have a 50 ohm resistor hooked up to it. As I increase the voltage, you can see the amperage goes up. And you see it goes up in the plus direction. Here's one amp. 50 volts. And uh, so we have a hundred, I guess we have a hundred ohm resistor because we have 50 volts and one, no, 50 ohm resistor. A 50 ohm resistor. So 50 volts into 50 ohms is an amp. There you go. And if I turn it the other direction, it's minus 50 volts and minus 50 amps. So this thing will actually source current and sink current. Okay, so it is a four quadrant supply. It'll force uh, plus and minus voltages and force plus and minus currents. And it will go into current compliance. So uh, we could set this at, uh, uh, a particular level. Here we go. I'm looking at here. Now, if I if I go up in voltage, I can put it right at say 0.4 amps, and then no matter how far I go up in voltage, it's clamped at 0.4, but it will go below that. Let's see if it clamps in point. Yeah, it clamps in the plus and minus direction as well. So, it has constant current mode and it has constant voltage mode. Um, so it has everything you want there. Turn that all the way up again. All right, um, let's talk about what else it does. It says it's a bipolar power supply. So we've just seen that it's bipolar because it goes plus and minus slash amplifier. What does it mean to be an amplifier? Well, uh, you can imagine that it's a voltage controlled power supply. You can program the voltage that you want it to output with a voltage. Now, a lot of times, power supplies will have a remote sense resistor. So you can put a potentiometer somewhere remote to the instrument and you can change the voltage somewhere else instead of having to reach for this knob here. But this one, you can program it from the front panel, okay? So let me, uh, 
Let me put on a uh, control voltage here onto the onto the input. All right, and then I will go over here. I'll change it from power supply mode to fixed gain amplitude am uh, amplifier, and uh, then let me turn on my control voltage. So what I'm doing is I'm inputting a triangle wave of a particular voltage and it's controlling uh, this particular device. It's acting as an amplifier. So it's, it's amplifying that um, signal that I'm putting in. This one happens to be a triangle wave and I have it set up to go uh, about 20 volts and then down to negative 20 volts. So it just swings back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. All right. So uh, how fast of an amplifier can you be? Uh, well, this will uh, operate up to 40 kilohertz. So certainly through the audio range. So 40 kilohertz um, down to DC. So yeah, it's pretty cool. All right. So you can have a fixed... Uh, a fixed gain of 10, you can have a fixed gain of 1. So right now I have it set with a gain of 1. You can see the meter there going just a tiny, tiny little bit. So it's taking this voltage here and using that. If I say times 10, it's taking this voltage and multiplying it by 10 uh, to do the control. And then it also has a variable gain amplifier where you can set uh, we're at fixed gain amplifier now. I'm going to put it on a variable gain amplifier now. Now this controls the gain of the amplifier, okay? And so I'm going to turn it up a bit. And here you can see we're going, instead of plus or minus 20, we're now going up to about plus or minus 30. All right? So you can set uh, fixed gain times 1, fixed gain times 10, variable gain uh, with this here. And I think the variable gain is that goes up to 20 if I remember right. Okay, put it back to fixed gain amplifier. All right, and this little knob here, you can have times 10, times 1, or remote. You can program it remotely as well. So it's very, very, uh, very, very fancy. Now, the meter here, okay, you can have it set for uh, amperage. So we could change the amplitude down and have it go uh, six volts, six volts per uh, scale instead of 60 volts. This is 60 volts, you can have a six. And over here, it's set up to 1.2 amps full scale to, uh, you can set it down to 0.12 uh, amps full scale, 120 milliamps per full scale, all right? It also has a mode over here, all right? And let me demonstrate that one. Um, let's see, what's a good way to demonstrate that one? Let me, um, let me turn a couple things on, just a second. All right, so, um, I'm still swinging, uh, plus and minus 20 volts here, and we have the resistor still in there, so we're going plus and minus 400 milliamps, and on, now I have the oscilloscope hooked up so we can watch it go down to minus 20 volts and then up to uh, plus 20 volts, okay? But let's increase the uh, frequency of the, uh, of the signal here. All right, so there we go. We're putting in a sine wave and we're at 163 hertz. Let's move it up here to 1.6 kilohertz. So now we're putting in 1.6 kilohertz. Uh, we still have a perfectly nice sine wave, but what I want to show you down here, the meters are both showing zero because they can't respond fast enough at 1.6 kilohertz. But the meter has an RMS uh, function in it, so I can turn on RMS and now I can read the RMS current. So amperage RMS down at the bottom, use this little scale down here at the bottom because uh, it's not plus and minus, it's always a plus value of because uh, it's a AC. Um, yeah. That's pretty cool. And then over here, I can change it to AC. So now we're measuring AC volts, RMS, and AC, and AC amps, RMS. So those are built in, into the meter as well. So yeah, this thing's really, really cool. All right, let's take a look at the data sheet. Um, there are several models. Uh, let me show you that. Let's see, I think on 
here. I'm sorry. Let's look at the data sheet. This is the data sheet for the thing out of the catalog. Um, so there's actually models HP 6825, 6826, and 6827. So what are the differences? Well, the differences are the 25 goes plus or minus 20 volts. The one that I have, the 26, goes plus or minus 50 volts. And then the 27 goes plus or minus 100 volts. But the amperage is different. Uh, the plus or minus 20 volts is at 2 amps. Plus or minus 50 volts at 1 amp. Plus or minus 100 volts at half an amp. And otherwise, they're basically all the same. Same speed and same controllability and all that other stuff. So uh, I think that the, this particular model, the 8626, is the most usable on the bench for me, at least. Um, let's see here. Let's take a look at the data sheet or the uh, user's manual. Bunch of stuff on here. Here's a here's a picture of. I talked about it being a four quadrant source. So here's the the source and the sync capability of it. Uh, these are very very common diagrams. So I can go plus and minus uh, 50 volts, up 50 volts and minus minus 50 volts, and then plus one amp and minus one amp. But then there's a limiting thing here. At uh, at 50 volts, I can't get the entire uh, one amp. Okay. I can if I'm sourcing, but not if I'm syncing, right? Um, so let's see here. There's a bunch of other things to look at. Uh, amplifier, uh, 10 times 10 range, 100 volts peak to peak output. Yeah, 100 volts peak to peak, minus 50 to plus 50. Um, at the times one range, it's only 10. Uh, anyway, here, 0 to 40 kilohertz. Um, yeah, it's a pretty nice machine. So anyway, okay, just before we go, let me crank it up to 40 kilohertz and let's see how it does here. Uh, where, here is 15. 15 kilohertz. So we're, our little edges are rounding a little bit up there. Oh, I went too far. So here's 6 kilohertz, 15 kilohertz, 23 kilohertz, 34 kilohertz, 40 kilohertz, 56, 60 kilohertz. It's starting to turn into a sine wave now, but it's still operating. Here we go. See if it'll hit 100 kilohertz. Yeah, 100 kilohertz. So, it's not, you know, if you're willing to live with a little bit of droop, it's still it's still doing pretty good. Okay, that's a quick look at my 6826A. Um, I found this on eBay. I made the guy an offer, $65. Um, it was going to cost me $51 to have it shipped, but fortunately, the guy is about 40 minutes south of me, so. Um, on my way to, uh, we went down to Monterey for a couple of days, and on our way to Monterey, we stopped in to the guy and uh, picked it up. So save the shipping. So 65 bucks. It is a steal. He didn't know if it worked or not, but I've checked it out, and it's just perfect. So looking good.